this this is why sometimes I can't record even when I should be this happens far more often than you'd think far more often than I'd like <laughs> please make it stop it just doesn't end <laughs> Hey everybody, it's Sad the Red, and welcome back to Shining Song Star Nova. Right then, last you left off, well, uh, Mika was emerging from the changing room just of his night song in his school uniform. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> this is gonna be, um, interesting. That's my, uh, that's my prediction. <laughs> Oh, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I was wondering if they were gonna put like a wig on her or something. This is. <laughs> At long last. This is amazing. I love everything about this. <laughs> uh. Witness me, Sylvia Night Song in the flesh. Witness me! Yeah. Uh. By the way, there's been some changes to the script you should be aware of. Changes? <laughs> Looks like they're dispensing with the first two story arcs and just diving right into the high school arc where Night Song meets Lightwind. I see, I see. And I don't really know for sure myself, but the tone of the story seems... kind of different? Different? In what way? Well, a lot of the action's really not there anymore. So, out of curiosity, if I hadn't have watched the anime with her, would the producer not be having this conversation with her? Because he, he, he wouldn't know. It seems like they want to emphasize the romantic aspect of the work more. I see. So the romance between Night Song and Lightwind will be the focus. Seems like it. Um, well, anyways, I'll give my best shot. There you go. It's, I mean... You're given this opportunity to say, yeah, just <laughs> do what you can. It might not be great, but hey, you know. <laughs> when I say it might not be great, I mean the movie. It's the first time I've done something like this, so maybe changes in the original work are normal? Unfortunately, they do tend to be sometimes, yes. Uh, I mean, sometimes changes have to be made for practical reasons. Other times they're made because studios don't know what the fuck they're doing. Y yeah, uh, anyways, this is still sort of his biggest television appearance yet, so let's do our best. Yeah, yeah. And it's just we. I mean, it's her. she's the one who's going to be actually doing the... Hello. Uh, is everyone ready? Also, I don't know if the audio is going to sound different than this or not. The test recording sounded, like, unusual. I don't know... I don't know why. I... It, I'm... Part of me is wondering if like, my earphones are fucked up, and if that's the case, I may need to actually invest in a new set. Although I haven't actually considered getting some proper headphones, so... Maybe the way of call I needed for that. Or the excuse. We're gonna commence shooting on Black Ops at the live action. Get in your positions, folks. Scene one, take one, Dark Song meets Lightwind for the first time. I keep telling you, Mr. I uh, Mr. Uh, Director, it's Night Song, wait. A dark song, yeah, okay, it's it's night song. Uh, yes, anyways, roll camera. Action. In this scene, Sylvie was supposed to be running the hallway of her sh high school when she crashes into Carl's. She ends up on the floor for a panty shot. Oh, uh, good. Huh, was there ever a sound like this in the anime? Meet your aunt in the hallway as expected. Ha, 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 panting. <laughs> Oomph. She crashed into Kyle and pretended to tumble the floor. Cut. Uh, Hashimoto, can you mess around this skirt a bit and give the camera a good penny shot? I, I, I understood. <sighs> I know we had them do an actual, like, you know, like, well, multiple bikini shoots, actually. There was the one at the pool and the one at the beach. But somehow this just feels worse. <laughs> I don't know why. Might be because of you. <laughs> Mika lifted her skirt up as directed and let the camera come close enough to count the cyan strips on her panties. <laughs> well, okay, now we know the... God damn it. <laughs> Moving on. 
Action. Oh, they're getting some action, all right. Uh, uh, um, you. Huh. So you're the new transfer student. Kyle arrogantly ran his hand through his hair. Swine like you will make a fine addition to my collection of women. <laughs> Carl's light wind. Oh? To know my true identity, you must be. Mika picked herself up, uh, picked herself up in front of Kyle. Sylvia Night Song, and they have come to stop your misdeeds. Cut. All right, that's a wrap. Let's move on to scene two. Ellipses. Oh, fuck off. This was strange. Uh, looks like this scene, it's gonna be a shower scene. Hashimoto, are you ready? Are you, are you sure you're not just filming, like, softcore porn at this point? I mean, leading... Yeah, never mind. Uh, understood. And it says... Oh, pfft. The next scene, Kyle-kun's gonna make a move on Hashimoto while she's changing into her gym jersey. Uh, understood. Oh. This was really strange. Poor Mika. <laughs> what was going on? Oh, what now? <sighs> uh, it looks like for this tag, Hashimoto's gonna be changing into her swimsuit. What horny middle schooler wrote this script? <laughs> that's it's like, that's me flipping. Like, what the fuck? Are you are you sure an adult wrote this? Because it kind of makes it worse. <laughs> oh, uh, understood. This wasn't black opera at all. Uh oh. <laughs> I flipped from the revised script in disbelief. In the original work, Night Song was supposed to battle with Lightwind for the first time on the rooftop of the school after revealing their identities. But according to this script, when Night Song and Lightwind finally reveal their identities at the end of, the end of episode 1, it just skips to a shower scene at the beginning of episode 2, with just some past references to a great battle that happened last time. In fact, the entire work was now more like a cosplay adult video with the hardcore sex just taken out. <laughs> I called it. Basically, a bunch of titillating skits teasing sex, which would never happen, and a bunch of build-ups for big battles that end up taking place off-screen before segueing back to more sexy fan service. That sounds like the most boring fucking cock tease ever. <laughs> it's, it's like... You're putting the... Like, sure, you're putting the fan, the fan service in there. And then you're just like, oh, other more interesting stuff could be happening, but it's not. <laughs> Oi, this wasn't quite how this project was originally pitched to me. Indeed, Valentis Pictures had said this was supposed to be a dark epic set in the exciting universe of black opera featuring action, drama, and romance. There aren't a lot of really bad adaptations kind of usually painted <laughs> as that kind of stuff anyway. This really was quite a, quite a stretch here. It's quite a shit show, I think is what you mean to say. Ellipses. The long day came to an end. Mika walked off the set looking thoroughly exhausted. I, 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 I'm back. Oh. Yeah. You did well. The scriptwriters didn't, but you did. Producer Sam, this isn't what I expected at all. Yeah, I've, I've got to say, um, this is quite different from the source material, eh? This is on Sylvia Nightsong's character is crumbling with each passing moment. What do we do? That's right, this is gonna be black opera and name only. Come to think of it, Akichan warned me about this. She told me just the other day that big corporations that make adaptations like these only care about the bottom line. C could this be what she meant? Well, at this rate, black opera is going to end up turning into a, into a fan service reel. I understand your concerns. I'll have a talk to the director and try to find out what's going on. You will? Thank goodness. Black Knight! Black Knight. At any rate, you might be Sylvia Knight Song's only possible savior. The fate of the kingdom truly rests with you. W well, let's keep in mind I'm just a producer, so I don't have much control over the project structure or anything. But I'll at least try to get you some answers, alright? Understood. And so, a few hours later, I found myself sitting beside Sadasan at a local watering well. Oh, we're back here again. Okay. Settled in a cigarette between downing mugs of beer. Ah, uh, that really hits the spot after the first day of filming. Uh, good work, producers on. You need a light, too? Uh, no, I can't see I partake. Uh, so you're from Shining, eh? I worked at the Akata-san before, a long time ago. 
How's the old man been doing lately? Actually, he's considering retiring soon. I've been handling an increasing share of work for the agency now. I see, I see. He's reaching that age, huh? <coughs> so, um, regarding Black Opera, the live action. Ah, uh, that. Sato took a deep chug of his beer. Listen here, kiddo. I don't know what you've been told by the folks upstairs, but between you and me, these kinds of tie-in products really are sideshows meant to advertise the main products. So you well, yes, but typically you want to, you know, even if it's meant to be a glorified advertisement, advertise it in a way that still makes it seem interesting or makes it be like, hey, maybe this horse material is actually even more interesting. At this rate, you're probably going to end up losing money. <laughs> With the, budget, with the budget they've given me, my hands are really tied behind my back here. Uh, you gotta give this poor director a break. Trying to pull together a damn show on such a sh uh, shoestring budget. Tch. Not only that, they want the show out next season while the anime is still fresh on people's memories. Hardly any time for post-production at all. I see. Well, I suppose that's how the industry is. Apparently, Golden Calf released a live-action manga adaptation feature in their idols a few seasons back and made bank. The thing was just a 12 episode long TNA reel and didn't even have anything to do with the original IP. Ever since then, a bunch of production committees uh, have formed to try to make their own idle television show based on a popular manga. This is your problem. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> this is this is the big sin right here. Basically, it's all about finding a trendy IP and mining it till it's dry. Yep. 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 That's 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 it. The, that's that's a bit too. It's. God, that's, this is depressing. <laughs> it's not even that bad, producer Zan. For just a few bucks, the production committee can script together a low-budget TV show that draws in eyeballs. It's all about name recognition for this business, after all. The animals get recognized, the IP gets more readers, and the fans get their service time. Huh. And you end up with unhappy fans who don't actually end up really buying... Well, they may buy into the original material if they were already going to. The likelihood of you attracting new customers if you're going to put out a shit qu uh, product is kind of low. And you might end up just pissing off the people who are already going to be buying it and may actually make it low. As long as they don't feel like the actual IP is threatened, the core IP, they may not give too much of a damn. It's really... They just won't be very happy about the adaptation. As if that's, you know, something that happens. That is not. <laughs> After all, this is the sort of content that the otaku of today demand. There, there is some truth in that, yeah. There's, there, there, there's some, yeah. You go to a shop in Akiba, you're all, you're, all you're going to see is a wall dojinchi of light wind screwing what's your name in every manner imaginable. You know why there's so much of that stuff out there? Because that's what people want. Look, this generation doesn't have the patience for development or more nuanced storytelling anymore. It's all about the money shots. Depends on the crowd you're trying to go for. People want to see the tits jiggling and the baddies getting punched out. Good prevails over Evo, evil. The hero walks off with the heroine in his arms. Come on, something like that is tried and true. It's also boring. Why take risks trying to sell something new when you can just repeat whatever the hell worked last time? <sighs> It's just boring. <sighs> there's, I mean, like I said last time, there's a time and a place for repetition. Just because something's been done doesn't mean you can't do it again. It's just a matter of not being lazy about it. Uh, state of the business we're in, huh? I see. Well, that certainly makes sense. It's certainly true that while, while we, at, uh, we at Shining Productions are hoping the television show helps increase Mika Chan's popularity to the fans. Uh, it's just a bunch of different corporations with disparate interests that have come together to fashion some popular IP into a moneymaker. Seriously, you gotta ask yourself, just where us artists fit in all this? Huh. I guess nowhere. <laughs> he downs more alcohol to drown the pain. Sato finishes mug of beer. <laughs> oh, another one here. I want to forget all this. I want to walk into the studio tomorrow and only barely remember what the hell I'm supposed to be there for. I really don't envy you, producer son. Why so? Having to babysit kids who don't know jack about the world? <sighs> Honestly, it would drive me insane. 
Well, a few of them don't know much about the world, but uh, there is a couple of them who know way too much. Too mu uh, more than some people ever ha ever should know. Damn it, <sighs> Is that Hashimoto girl giving you trouble? As a fan of the original work, she was confused as to why the direction of the pro uh, the pro this project was taking. I see. Ah, so she's one of them, huh? The passionate and idealistic ones really are the worst. Why? They expect quality? They expect you to try? Kids nowadays, they often puff about corporate greed or whatever, but they're the ones that made things this way. Not entirely, really. It, n n mm, some aren't helping. No. But to shift all the blame? Yeah, that's scapegoating. I'm not sure I follow. Now, well, look. They can heave and haul about the original version of the story all they want, but in the end, it's them who worship their idols and whatnot. Look, the story is nice, but it's not really what excites people nowadays. The people really want here is sex appeal. Look, the committee cast an idol and a pretty boy from some rock bands lead this project for a reason. Modern day Akihabara really was built upon the gospel of the wife, eh? And the sooner that Hashimoto kid realizes this, the better. Look, I know idols need to have their pure image and all, but they're pros too. They gotta have some understanding of how this industry works. Guys like me, we just keep our heads down, if you know what I mean. Honestly, it makes everything a lot easier if you don't think too much about this. While some of our talents are indeed more knowledgeable about the realities of the industry, I think Mika's innocence is a part of her appeal, don't you think? After all, girls who are jaded don't translate well into popular idols. Well, Aki puts on a fucking ploy. Oops, you'll have to pardon me for overstepping my position here. I didn't mean to talk about affairs outside my expertise. I'm just a humble television show director here. Can't say no jack about managing idols. No, no. Regardless, I'll take your advice into consideration. <laughs> Anyways, that's enough about that. Uh, I came here to goddamn forget about work for a bit. Let's drink. Well, that certainly does sound like an idea. An idea. <laughs> That's how we spent the rest of the night numbing our senses against the tough realities of the business world. Blech. The shoots of the sh television show continued with no improvement to the story quality. Indeed, it appeared from the script the showrunners were just trying to make a sexy supplement to the pre-existing black opera franchise. From the perspective of a producer, I can understand the general plan. Don't let make a sex appe sexual appeal to get the fans excited, while also using the black opera name recognition to draw views. It's, again, it's one of those things where it's like, it really is a gamble though, whether or not you're going to make money off of it. Because when word of mouth spreads that it's shit, you might just end up with more backlash than, you know, anything else. As an agent of shining production, I should be happy about this. And yet, oh, yeah. Mika slumped off the set after yet another grueling day of filming van service shots. Good work. Patricia san what's going on here? Oh, this was supposed to be a live action adaptation of the manga, but this isn't like Black Opera at all. Nope, it's a corporation cashing in rather than trying to do any actual work. Expecting results without putting in any effort whatsoever. Fuck. This is a whole different kind of depressing. <laughs> What is the director thinking? At this rate, people are going to be angry, you know? This isn't how Sylvia Nightsong should, would act at all. Why would she be so helpless and end up in so many compromising situations all the time? I really don't know about about this. Uh, well, sometimes these kind of projects don't really have as big of a budget as you would think. Everyone's just trying to do their best to put together a viable product using what limited resources they have at their disposal. But is this really what's best? No. Uh, am I interrupting something here? Ah, Sada san, thank you for your work. You've been kind of listless, lady. You got a problem here, Missy. Mm. I'll do my best. Make the challenge just a bit tired. After all, we weren't ever informed about the high volume of service shots we'll be performing for this job. And that's so. Oh well, can't be helped. Anyway, something new for Nidal, right? This kind of thing's pretty old hat, isn't it? 
Well, I suppose so. Uh, anyways, I understand the pressures uh, everyone's under, so let's do our best given the circumstances. <laughs> Sorry about this, little missy, uh, but there's not much I can do about it either. Huh. Just the way things are. <laughs> With that, he put a cigarette in his mouth and walked away. Anyway, let's go, Mika. Shoot's over for today. Okay. After Mika got changed back into her usual look, he walked back to the office. Ellipses. Oh no, definitely a sign that something's not right. At first, I was really excited to be Night Song, but now, the reality's quite bitter. Well, it's still your first big television role. I'm sure as the popularity grows, you'll land bigger and more well-funded productions. Black Opera. <laughs> Tell the truth, I'm kind of disappointed how it turned out too. Uh, it really was entertaining IP. Would have been nice if Alanis fully committed to the show, but I guess it's just how things turn out this time. So this is the harsh truth in the 3D world. <laughs> anyway, this is a pro idol. Your job is performed to the client's expectations. The deal might not have turned out as good as we originally thought, but we still have the obligation to see it through. Understood. Oh. Oh, yeah. I didn't really pay attention to this last time. Or, well, any of this, actually. Because I didn't recognize it, so I just kind of glanced over it. Mika laid awake in her futon, unable to sleep. <laughs> Fontana fell his back. I finally thought I'd accomplished my dream, and yet it turned out like this. I'm not sure if I want to contribute to ruining Black Opera like this. Yeah. And yeah, producer Son says I have to do it because it's a deal. It was a deal, wasn't it? I got paid money to accept the role, didn't I? Means I can't just back out. What do I do? Mika opened up her cell phone and saw a message from Aki. Oi, we haven't seen Chuni Chan at the office lately. How are things going with the television show? Eh? A message from Aki Chan? Maybe she'll have something to say about this. Maybe. But I'll leave that for next time. So. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next episode. Poor Mika. <laughs>